They like to say you can choose two, cheap, good or fast, all three together are not possible. Does this also apply to this printer? Sass and Glück auf together. I'm Jan and today I have the Anycubic Cobra 2 Pro on my table. It was provided to me for this review by Geekbang, but neither they or Anycubic have any influence on the content of this video. In terms of price, the printer is in the upper entry level segment. It is advertised with a maximum speed of 500 mm per second, an acceleration of 20,000 mm per square cube, a print volume of 22 by 22 by 25 cm, a direct drive extruder, automatic bed leveling, vibration compensation, also known as input shaping by Clipper, and Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, only for the smartphone app. If you compare the specs with the price, you get a pretty good price performance ratio. I don't want to beat about the bush, so let's get straight to the things I like about the Cobra 2 Pro. The print image is absolutely fine. If you want to print with the standard profile and the Prusa slicer supplied, the surface comes out absolutely neatly at normal speed. If you select the high speed sport on the printer, the print image naturally deteriorates. For parts that need to fit precisely, you should set the printer to the slowest speed stable. However, this is still quite fast. The direct drive extruder also helps, which means that frequent short retracts, such as here with the wireframe skull, are no problems. This printer is fast. 500 mm per second is probably only possible on the highest speed and even then only at certain moments. The real figure is more like 250 to 300 mm per second. A reasonable Benji takes around 29 minutes in the standard setting. The one optimized by any qubit takes about 15 minutes. The standard slicer is either the Anycubic slicer, which is not a fork of Cura but of the Prusa slicer, or the Prusa slicer itself with a corresponding profile. Nice change even if I don't like the workflow with either of them. Assembling an operation is kept simple and streamlined. So there's not much you can do wrong, especially as a beginner. Input shaping and automatic bed leveling are both easy to use here. The design of the printer itself is functional yet robust, which is exactly what I like, no big fuss. Touchscreen is a pleasant size and responds pretty well. Printer itself is really fine out of the box, I didn't have to tinker with it to get good prints. What I don't like about the Cobra 2 Pro. Although it has Wi-Fi installed, it is currently not possible to print directly from a PC. Unfortunately, a USB stick has to be used to bring the G-code files to the printer. There is also no web mask where you can upload the G-code files. Anycubic would like to promote its own smartphone app here, which I really do not like nor recommend. Both slicers supplied currently only have a profile for PLA. You have to design other material profiles yourself. However, hand on heart, the beginner for whom the printer is designed will probably only print PLA, which is not a bad thing at all, because you can really achieve a lot with it. The volume of the printer is ok, it is not excessively loud, but at the standard or speed setting it is clearly audible. Also you do not have the option of going deeper into the settings even if you wanted to. The set offset for example can only be adjusted during printing. But so far I have had no reason to adjust it. The ABL has been sufficient so far. Some minor crying of mine. There is only 10 meters of filament included. A whole roll wouldn't have hurt, would it? What I also do not like. I have no idea what kind of system is running on the printer. It seems to be a fork of clipper that has been severely limited by any cubic. But there is no confirmation of this. If any cubic would open clipper, I would love it. Another big manufacturer had to learn that the community likes that a lot more. Mm -hmm. Who was what again? <coughs> Creality K1! <coughs> so what's my conclusion? I have to admit I really had to puzzle over the negative points. Of course the printer is not perfect, but it is absolutely suitable for beginners and delivers good results for them. What really puzzles me are the four USB ports on the front. One is supposed to be for a camera, at least that's what I gather from a pictogram, which raises the question of how and where I can access the image. Maybe it will come later. 
It seems to be common practice to finish developing the product at the customer's place. Yes, I'm looking over at you, Creality. And then there are three more USB ports. Okay, one for the USB stick with which you can get the G-code files on it. But what I do I do with the other two? Will there be an update at some point that enables the printer to control other printers? So that the maybe clipper derivate can control other printers? I have no clue. I really have to admit that the positive impressions from the point of view of a printer for beginners definitely outweigh the negative ones. I really did not expect it to be like this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. But as always, I hope I've been able to help you. If you want to spend money despite or because of my review, you'll find affiliate links in the video description. Does not cost you any more, but helps my channel. But that's enough for now. I'm out, until next time, see ya!